Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome to um, Daily Reflections with Chris. I'm Chris. And today we're gonna talk recovery um, as much as possible. <laughs> um, so I'm at my group right now. I'm waiting for my for my compañeros or my, my um, you know, my buddies to come and join me. I'm here early just because of stuff i just happen to be in this neighborhood anyway i'm here early and i'm waiting so i thought you know what i'm gonna jump on and 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 talk recovery with my with my uh my youtubers and um this is my cup group my group cup a long time ago um no no this is my group now but those of you who know that logo was from a long time ago this cup's been here a while <laughs> Probably longer than me. Um, so anyway, so hey everybody, my name's Chris, and I'm going to share my experience, strength, and hope with you as it pertains um, to recovery from alcoholism, right? Or recovery from anything, recovery from people, recovery from um, other addictions, right? Like overeating. Uh, I've never been addicted to exercising, so <laughs> I probably should maybe try it. <laughs> but I've never been addicted to that. But you know, whatever... Anything hurts, habits and hangups, anger, resentment, fear. Um, you know, one time I was uh, I was at this um, public information event, right, where they invite like a psychologist, um, somebody from the legal system, a newcomer, an old timer, and um, a woman. You know, to talk about the different areas of recovery and how recovery has really helped the the entities right? our recovery you even get a, a preacher sometime you know they get somebody from the religion and I, one time there was this doctor and she was like anybody have any questions and this chick was smart man i was like oh my god i was so into her talk and she was a psychologist from mexico and i and i asked her i said i'm mean, i think she was a doctor Because I asked her, I remember asking her, um, you know, do you all, do you really consider alcoholism a disease? I mean, I know that Dr. Silworth wrote, wrote, us, wrote us that letter and talked about the the disease and, and the allergy and um, the mental obsession and the craving, right? He talked about all that in, in, a, in a letter he wrote to Alcoholics Anonymous. To kind of give them credit, right? Um, so, I asked her, I said, do you really, do you doctors, I mean, is it in the book somewhere in y'all's book of diseases, do, is there an, uh, an entry for alcoholism? And she said, well, alcohol itself is like, okay. It's the person, once they put it in their system, certain people just don't re react to it differently. And I said, okay, you know, I'm listening. And she says, you know, I don't know that we classify it as a, as a disease per se. She said, but alcoholics are the only, it's the only disease. It's the only thing, the only sickness where the people who have it are addicted to the pain it causes. She says, you don't see cancer patients going to radiation because they love the way it feels. Or diabetics going to, to, to their, to their uh, treatments because they love the way that feels. Nobody does it. Nobody else does it because they like the way it feels. They do it because it's what they have to do to survive. I said, alcoholics are the only ones who are addicted to the chaos, who are addicted to the fighting, addicted to the the misery, addicted to the the sickness, the, you know, the hangovers and and addicted to being broken, broken. Alcoholics are the only ones that are that 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 are suffering with an addiction to pain. And I was like, and suffering, and I was like, Wow, that made so much sense to me. I mean, I don't even know if she answered the question, but I, at that point, I didn't really care. Because for the first time, I seen, I saw alcoholism from a different view, right? Or addiction in general, like, you know, I'm, I'm having to take my treatments uh, 
my uh, my trend uh, my my hormones differently this time intravenously and i don't intramuscularly they call it and i don't like that i i man i get so nervous every time i gotta do that it triggers me not to want to do drugs but it takes me to weird place it's weird it's weird i mean it's not like um i'm tortured by it it's just it's really hard for me as a matter of fact i was thinking today like maybe i'm gonna switch it up or maybe i'll have somebody else do it this time or something because i don't want it to get so routine that i'm gonna get so relaxed about it so anyway it just had me kind of thinking about the whole to the the whole topic of of this being a disease or not just brought me to that space where I was earlier about having to take um my my treatments but thank god I don't got to do it till friday but that that lady that doctor she really did help me see alcoholism in a different view where it's like even when I'm in I'm, I'm suffering or I'm in pain or I'm, I'm going through something, I think, Chris, are you really addicted to this way? Are you are you are you being addicted to this right now? And I have to stop myself and be like, ah, oh, this is gross. This is painful. I don't want to do this. And it kind of pushes me to work the solution, which for me is in the twelve steps of recovery. It's that's where my solution is. It's about getting honest, um, you know, getting clear asking for help and then taking the suggestions whatever that whatever the suggestion is to do it <laughs> you know there was a time when i came in i was going to do anything anything they told me i, I would do it. it everything i heard like in a meeting or a group of people and they said well i tried this and it really really worked i would try it. i tried that and it would really really work you know when it comes to recovery there's certain things i mean in, in the medical aspect you're talking about vitamins or drugs or whatever I, I it's not like my thing but when in recovery they all these suggestions that they had I, I would try them all and then I realized that you know they didn't they didn't all work for me but I, I wanted to try I wanted to see you know it was it gonna work because I was one desperate and two just willing willing to do whatever it took to be honest so anyway that's probably not even on topic or maybe it is we'll figure it out right now so once again, today is March uh, the 22nd, and to, to the, the, the title of today's entry is called No More Struggle. And we have ceased fighting anything or anyone, even alcohol. That's from Alcoholics Anonymous, page 84. When AA found me, I thought I was in for a struggle and that AA might provide the strength I needed to beat alcohol. Victorious in that fight, who knows what other battles I could win. I would need to be strong though. All my previous experience with life proved that. Today, I do not have to struggle or exert my will. If I take those 12 steps and let my higher power do the real work, my alcohol problem disappears all by itself. My living problems also cease to be struggles. I just have to ask whether acceptance or change is required. It is not my will, but his that needs doing there's a there's a few things happening in my life right now that that really don't look the way i thought they would look six months ago look looking forward i i said this i'm gonna do this 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 is gonna happen we're gonna do this we're gonna go here and and <laughs> my life is completely different than that that comes with work relationship um family a lot of that stuff it just looks very different than what i thought it would look today and i remember having a conversation with my co one of my co-workers earlier and she was like chris just just come over here ready like 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 just come work with us and and <laughs> And I said, well, maybe, but I mean, I mean, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but I like, I like where I am, you know? And, and then this other uh, friend of mine called and says, hey, Chris, look, there's, 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 there's jobs up for me. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to look at them because I don't, I don't know where I, where I stand. And then I was like, 
in my head, something the whisper and says, Chris, just be cool, man. Just be cool, man. And I was like, oh yeah. And so I took all the information, but I'm not, I mean, I may or may not do anything with it. I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to be cool right now. I'm just going to chill. And I think that the topic, that's what it, that's, that's what it's talking about. It's like we come to this point where we're no longer uh, fighting it. We're either accepting it, accepting it, or changing it. Right? The serenity, the serenity prayer says, uh, you know, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, which is people, places, and things, and sometimes even situations. I can't change them. I mean, I could, I could try, but. Um, you know, some stuff, there's just some stuff I can't change. Um, courage to change the things that I can. It's like, what can I change? What can I change? Well, I could change my work right now if I needed to, if I felt like I had to. Or I could change my, I could try to change my attitude. I could put on some lively music. I could start praying or meditating. I could call somebody on the phone. Um, you know, if I, if, if, um, I'll give you an example in a little bit. Um, so courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference, right? Okay. I gotta, I have to have the wisdom to know what I can and I cannot. I mean, sometimes I can't tell. I mean, I try to talks about it right here. I try to force it, right? I, I try to exert my will. And it's like, there's. Guys, I've, I've tried. Oh man, I've tried a million to exert my will a million times, and uh, some things just some people won't change, some situations won't change. So, you know, serenity accept. You know, serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things that I can, and wisdom to know the difference. So, if I if there's something I can't change, and I. I'm asking, I'm praying for serenity, right? Because if if it's if I'm praying about it, it's, I'm probably struggling with it. So I want I want to have the serenity, unless I'm being proactive. Um, so I want the serenity to accept those things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can. Okay. Say I say I didn't have a job. I can change that. I could go fill out applications and go to interviews and and get a job and show up to work. Say I don't have money in, in my bank. Get this. Let's go. Let's do this, man. Let's let's figure this out. How are we gonna? If we need to go and and move our bodies and go find some work doing something, okay. What can we do? What what are what are we good at? Or what do we like having fun? What what do we have fun doing? And then go do that. You know, painting or uh, working on cars and make some extra money, right? Mowing lawns, deck redecorating, moving stuff around, asking around, calling people. Hey. Um, you want to, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm free today. Anything you need me to do around the house for, I can do, I can do, you know, I can do some chores for, for a small fee, right? Cause you're, you're trying to make money or if you're not, you could just do it for free, which is also good. It's good for the soul. Um, so, um, having the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Uh, I'm still working on courage on some things that I know that I can change, but I'm too, um, sorry, this is my first cup of coffee of the day and it's like six o'clock at night. So it's really good too. I made it myself. Mm, so good. Um, so there's some stuff in life. I don't, I don't have the courage yet to do I'm I'm okay. I'm like nah. I'm okay a little bit longer, <laughs> but I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to change. I just feel like some stuff doesn't need changing yet. That's why prayer is important because I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, I'm pretty smart. I think I know what needs to be changed. I mean, when I mess up, I know my attitude's got to be changed. But I know that my attitude won't change until the, the change inside happens. Like, what's going on in here that's making, that's that's bringing out that attitude or the bad mood or the, I mean, if it's something from the outside, get rid of it or let's go. Let's make it happen. But on the inside, well, it takes a little bit more work, right? And when I'm willing to 
get honest and look inside and say, Chris, why are you, why, why are you doing that again? Seriously. You know, I, I never met a group of people like us that have something so good and were screwed up so hard, so fast. And I tend to do that. And I'm trying, with God's help, now, you know, I try to do it by myself and uh, it didn't work too good. But with God's help, it is definitely a lot easier and a lot makes makes a lot more sense. So this time around, right, this is my third time in, 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 a, in recovery and this time around, I I knew that I wanted to beat alcohol. The other times, I don't I don't know. I guess I wasn't sure because I had to go and do more research. But this time around, I was like, man, I just want to not drink today. I just not. I don't want to even think about alcohol. I don't want to keep fighting with the people I love. I don't want to keep hurting them. I don't want to continue to hurt myself i want my mind i want some sanity in my mind i want some clarity i want some i want my heart to start beating again i mean my heart was dead it was locked up in chains black as it can be i mean rotten and because of the steps and and uh, prayer it's 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 getting better it's really starting to beat again like really really hard like so hard but it still gets confused and I have a choice today this is this is pretty much telling me that I have a choice today I can I can stop fighting or I could keep fighting right if it's some stuff is worth fighting for trust me like fighting for your marriage like fighting for your friendship fight there is stuff worth fighting for right um but all this if it's if it's pettiness, that's not worth fighting for, right? But I have a choice today. I can figure out if it's worth fighting for or not, and then take the necessary action. Not exert my will, but allow God to do His will. Allow my higher power to be the higher power that I, as I that I understand Him to be, and I'll just be Chris, and I'll not drink today, and I'll do my best to to. Um, to get some clarity so that when I'm making amends or I'm making an apology, it's, they're not just words. It's for real, for real. You know, and a lot of, a lot of not, a lot, a lot of not fighting with other people, it has a lot to do with me. Like, I can't always shut up, but I can't um, not let it go there. Not let it get, get to the point where I can't shut up, you know? Because I know, I'm, I mean, I'm not dumb in the beginning when there's the very first time something bothers me and I don't say anything about it or speak up about it or write about it or process it. It only gets worse. And when it gets worse, Chris does things he's not, he's not, he's not proud of. He's not okay. He starts fighting with any, with everybody. And I don't want to do that no more. You know, this, this program gave me more than just a reprieve from alcohol, man. It gave me more than that. It gave me a life worth living. It gave me a set of tools that, that I can use. I, I just got to open the book or talk to somebody who who I trust about what I'm going through. And, you know, if they're recovered, they're going to be like, well, did you pray about it? I'm like, okay, hold on. Let me, I'll be back. Um... Okay, I prayed about it. And they're like, okay, good. Well, what does the big book say about that? <laughs> if we were in church, it would be like, what does the Bible say about that? Right? I mean, these books, the um, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, I mean, you read it and there's power in there. There's so much power. There's so much clarity. Sometimes people will be like, it's full of, it's, blah 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 i'm not gonna read it i'm not gonna do the steps you can't make me it's like okay no no we're not trying to make you man we're just 
giving you an opportunity to have the same recovery that we have. We're better, man. Come on. We we root for each other in a way that it's like we want you to, We I want the, the guy that walks in, I want him to have the best freaking life he's ever dreamed of. Because I have it too. And even when I don't can't see that I do, I, I still want that for him. Man, suffering with alcoholism, it's like... It's a dissonance every single day. It's Russian roulette every single day. It's so tiresome every single day. So wasteful every single day. But man, even 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 the even the doctors say we don't have a cure for people like you. I said, but whatever's happening over there, that twelve step program, just. He told, I remember Dr. Silwork said, told a Bob on Bill. He says, I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing it. Because whatever you're doing, it's working. And he had a list of these 12 steps. That's what he was doing. Just being honest. Getting, taking his inventory. Repairing the damage he'd done. And sharing it with other people. He found Bob and then psh, they co-created Alcoholics Anonymous. And man, how lucky am I? How lucky am I? So many people have died without even having not one bit of solution, not even not even offered to them by nobody. And I feel like the ones who make it here, which is a very small percentage, it's like less than 3% of alcoholics make it to Alcoholics Anonymous or any type of recovery. And of that 3%, only 3% stay and the other percent leave. So it's not, I mean, it's not, um, it's, we're big, but not that big. We have a lot more work to do, a lot more um, meetings to have, a lot more events to, to do, a lot more carrying the message, a lot more workshops. I mean, we're not, our, our job is not, uh, it's job sounds hor like a bad word, but our job's not done. We're just getting started. And if I'm fighting with everybody, if I'm trying to exert my will on everybody's life, it's really it really doesn't work. It really doesn't. Today I'm here waiting at my group because I really I really want to go home, <laughs> but I'm not because I we're having a business meeting where we talk shop. We talk about how the group is doing. Where can we where can we improve? What do we should stop doing? What do we need to do more? Where do we need more literature? How, how, you know, do we have, are we gonna, are we doing any celebrations? Are we going out of town for any trips? We we do a lot of work we, here in our group. So today we're having our business meeting to be able to do that. And I know that we couldn't, If we didn't stay together, if we didn't practice unity in this program, the whole program would die. And it wouldn't just die for us. It would die for those other ones who are still suffering, who have not even made it here. It would die for those who, whose children are still in the womb that could possibly make it here. It would die for those who aren't even thought of yet. You know, your children's 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 ch children's children. That if they needed and wanted, that they could hang out here with people like me or us, not just me, everybody, anybody here, and maybe reco maybe recovery, perhaps. I would love, I mean, I wish I could tell you that everybody who walked through the door recovered, but that's, that would lie. That That's a lie. A lot of us do, but a lot of us don't. The cho and the choice, it's, it's all individual. You know, I'm not going to... They say you can't. They say you can't get people sober, and you can't make them drink. I believe in that, and I'm not going to take responsibility if somebody else drinks. Will I see if there if I had a part in it? Yeah, but if somebody says, "Hey, I, I don't like, I don't like y'all because y'all too rough over there, or whatever," and I'm just like, "Okay," then he just doesn't want to be a part of it. Okay, can't hate him for that. He just doesn't want it. Um. But I'm here because I still, I want it. I mean, I, I want it. I never really knew how much into it I was going to be. 
I would come to these things, get my purple sign, go home. Get my purple sign, go home. Come, get my purple sign. Sleep through the meeting, get my purple sign, go home. And something really started to happen to me where I was like, huh, I want, I want some of that. I want, I want that thing called joy. What does that feel like? What, what is real love? What is, what does that look like? What, oh, oh, what, what? I got to drink ever again if I don't want to. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Even to me, before I even say it out loud, I was like, man, I really could. I would love that if I never had to drink again if I didn't want to. And then I stayed here long enough and they told me further down, you don't have to drink again even when you do want to. And I was like, what? Even when I do want to, I don't have to? And normal people are probably thinking like, oh, hello. But I'm not normal. <laughs> and most people that I hang out with are not normal. We need We need something like this to help us. Because by ourselves we're we're dying out there. By ourselves we're making by ourselves we're making crazy decisions. By ourselves we're doing crazy things. By ourselves we're fighting everything and anyone and everyone. By ourselves we're 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 um we're not okay. So. I don't know. I think this is enough. It's it's not in the promises, but I think this is another promise right here that we'll cease fighting or anything, any or even alcohol. How cool is that? To be able to say no to a to a beer, to be like, yeah, no, thank you. And drink coffee or water or tea or Sprite or whatever. And uh, we're not deprived. It just feels like. It might seem like we are because everybody else is drinking and we're not, but we're not deprived. I mean, it, I have a good life in recovery. So I guess um, I may have went off topic, so I apologize. <laughs> How did I stop seeing this fighting or anything or anyone? I did the work. It's just, it, that's just, it's really simple program. Do the work and you will stay sober and have a really good life. That's it. And then you carry the message so that other people can enjoy it too. I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed. I made it when I hear, hear what I did. Um, If you're feeling like, sorry, I probably think you probably think the video's over. It is. It's about to be over. I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to encourage you if you're if you're feeling some sort of way, call somebody, uh, write write a letter. I mean, do some fun things. Put some really good music on, or maybe a, a funny a funny movie, or maybe you like scary movies. I don't know, but whatever features so in a positive way, get some of that today. If you're not feeling. 100%. Maybe you haven't felt 100% for the last month or the last week. Man, I get that. I mean, it's just sometimes stuff happens and we just like, we stay frozen. I was froze for a while. And I can't really say time helped me. And doing things, even when I don't want to do things, go out and hang out with people, even when I didn't really want to because that being stuck at home and some type of little depression, it's, it's horrible. You know, if you're stuck at if you're at home, and, well, you wouldn't kind of stuck at home if you're having fun, right? But if you're at home and having fun, ugh, man, I'm jealous of you right now because I've tried, I've tried a million times, and I'm getting better at it. But I'm always somewhere doing something. It's it's like I like doing that too. So, folks, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Um, I encourage you to always find help. Always. Um, you know, don't be afraid to ask people for help, especially when they say, uh, I'm willing to help you. Ask them first. Um, and um, you know, if you're struggling with whatever, it doesn't, maybe it's not recovery, maybe it's a divorce or a loss of a relationship or a loss of a friend or a lover, or maybe, um, you know, you, you didn't get the job you thought you were going to get or or you think your husband's cheating on you or whatever whatever the situation may be um it, it won't get better by drinking 
It won't get better by drinking to oblivion. It won't get better by doing all the drugs in the world. It will not get better by going in and spending all your money, you know, where you're not supposed to. It's not going to make it better. As a matter of fact, it'll probably make it worse. So just hang tight. I know, it, I know um, hanging tight for too long makes the heart weary, but it's coming. It's coming. I know it's coming. I know it's coming. It's coming because it always has. Anytime I feel this way, I pray and I just don't drink and it comes. You know, work on some stuff. Get into my recovery. Call my call three people on the list. Say, hey, um, how's your day? And then just, just, just let it go. It's such an easy program, yet I can easily complicate it. I cannot, I can easily make it so, so hard. So for today, I'm going to practice not, for the rest of the day, I'm going to practice not struggling or fighting with anyone, which should be interesting because we're about to have a business meeting uh, and we're going to talk finances and all that. But I want to, I want to challenge myself. I want to be, a, I want to challenge myself to see if I could leave this uh, meeting tonight without being resentful at somebody or have something to say because my ideas are right and theirs are not. I don't want to do that today. I'm just going to let it. And anybody can do that. You can do that too. Anytime you want, you should decide, you know what? I'm not going to fight anything or anyone. I'm going to ask for acceptance and courage. And that's it. And let it go. If you're able to. Maybe do it three or four times. If you're not able to, do it like ten times. And it'll help. It just does. It just works. There's something magical about that. Uh, so anyway, folks, I think I've taken up enough of your time. I want to thank you for tuning in so much. Um, I don't have any announcements or anything to say except um, that I love you. And I hope uh, to see you soon. All right. Bye.